your host, my uncle, Red Reed! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Big, big week up at the lodge this week. We had our remote control lawnmower races. <laughs> Talk about fun, especially for the winner, or as we call him, the guy who still has his toes. <laughs> You know, Corinne, I could have told you that wasn't going to work. Oh, I could have told him that wasn't going to no. work. <laughs> because you know what it is? Because yeah. most remote control frequencies, yeah. they're all the same, right? So what happens is that makes your lawnmowers go all crazy and wacky like they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> was, was there much uh, personal serious injury? Well, yes and no, Harold. Uh, Buster Hadfield escaped with just a trim, but Junior Singleton was pretty well mowed and mulched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should, shouldn't you be down at the hospital extending your best wishes? No, that would be an admission of guilt, Harold. <laughs> Besides, uh, my presence has been requested at a meeting of the town council. I got some splaining to do. You, you want to ride down? Won't be necessary, Harold. There's my ride now. scenes from this particular show and I don't like to hype you too much but by golly if this doesn't make you want to watch this show then well you obviously have a life well the possum lies didn't get off too bad there on the lawnmower fiasco town council didn't find us or anything they just forced us to adopt a highway so now we are the proud custodians of the three-mile stretch up at the far end of the lake. You adopted Orphan's Bend? Yes, we did, Harold, and we got some big, big, big plans for going to jack up the speed limit, ban seniors, and throw a toll booth in there. No, 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 you're not supposed to do it like that, Uncle Red. No, no, no. Your job is to keep that piece of the highway clean and safe. Okay. Yeah, like one time our junior rangers troop, like one summer, right, we adopted a highway too, oh. and for the high entire summer, that was our job. But on the very first day, very first day, yep. very first day, I cleaned up all more cops and tin cans than anybody else. So for the remainder of the month, I got to clean up the entire highway while everybody else went to the swimming pool. Oh. That's not fair, huh? Well, no, oh, it's okay. My mom wouldn't let me go to the swimming pool. Oh. I, you know, everybody flicks their towels and stuff, you know, that could interfere with my ability to... <laughs> Walk? No, not walk. Reproduce. Yeah. And you know, that could happen. I pray a lot. You know, Harold, I'm thinking you could use a little exercise, eh? Why don't you come on up to the highway and help us clean that up just for a little while, eh? Oh, yeah, I, I could do that. Right, I've got some right. spare time. All right, and when you get up there, Harold, just clean it up as fast as you can, okay? Don't talk to the other guys, all right? How come? Because they'll kill you, Harold. <laughs> Oh, the devil challenged evil can evil to a contest of impossible jumps. The winner would get a hell of a prize, and the loser would take his lumps. Oh, they jumped a canyon, a mountain, and a lake, and a field of hungry bull weevils. And the devil discovered, to his surprise, he was the lesser of two evils. <laughs> the Possum Lodge word game. And if you love British cars, then you're gonna love tonight's grand prize, a business card from Flinty's Towing. All right, <laughs> Uncle Rick, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dalton Humphrey to say this word. Paranoid. <laughs> Paranoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go! All right, Dalton, persecution complex. The courthouse. No, 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 that's a prosecution complex. <laughs> okay, if you're suspicious of everyone, for absolutely no apparent reason, then you would say that's being... Normal. <laughs> all right, all right, let's say you're negative with no contact with reality whatsoever. That would be... My daughter. <laughs> let's go another way on this, Dalton, okay? You got two slippers, that makes a... Pair. Okay, someone bugs you, you get... Annoyed. Put them together, put them together. You say someone's stealing my slippers to annoy me? <laughs> You know what, it's probably my neighbor, you know, because he's trying to get me. He thinks I sneak into his house at night and rearrange his furniture. All right, and he thinks that way because he's... Caught me doing it. You know how every once in a blue 
moon, the world gives you credit, huh? <laughs> Happens to me once every year. You know on that special garbage day where people can put out anything they want of any size and the garbage collectors have to take it? Well, that's the day everybody wishes they had a van like mine. Take a look at this. Huh? What do you see here? Huh? <laughs> Bathtubs, taps, showers, nozzles, drains, U-joints. Now, I suppose you could use this stuff to put a guest bathroom in your house. What'll that get you? Yes. Uh, I look at this stuff and I see cooking over charcoal. That's right, a bathacue. <laughs> for the lid. Now all we gotta do is add a hinge on there, so the lid will open up this way. Okay, we could we could bolt hinges on there, but that would involve probably nine hours of work plus steel and a drill. <laughs> Instead, I recommend the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> there we go. Give her a try here. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, you raise that up and down a few times cooking the steak, you're gonna work up an appetite. Something to hold her open. Oh, there we go. The shower curtain rod out of her. There we go. All right, now, what is the most important step when you're building a bath of hey, Before you fire her up, you really want to get the bath mat out of there. Otherwise, you can get yourself a bad case of athlete's food. Okay, now the big question. Do we go gas? Do we go charcoal? Charcoal's real good, you know, because when you've got it all done, you just sweep the ashes right down the drain. But today, we're going to go top drawer. We're going to build a bath of that's going to be a gas grill. Isn't that something? Huh? Then we got the copper pipes there carrying the gas, and we got shower nozzles as burners. <laughs> all right, now they're all hooked up to our uh, propane unit here. Buy in bulk. You're going to save big, eh? Well, I guess it's time to fire her up, or in this case, hit the showers. <laughs> and I could use a little extra coating of duct tape. There we go. There we go. That's fine. Play another feature of this unit. It's got the electric sparker on it. features to her there. I got the cheese slices all ready to go. You want to limit your guests maybe two slices a piece on that. And then we got the shower rack here with our shampoo bottles, but I've emptied them out and I put the ketchup in this one and I put the mustard in this unit and I got the special barbecue sauce in here. And here's the next little feature I added. A little cold water tap there hooked into a cold water shower. Kind of deal with the flare-ups, you know, kind of keep the flames down in there because I'll tell you something, nothing takes the fire out of your loin chop like a cold shower. <laughs> all right, you're asking what's cooking. Well, come take a look. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? <laughs> See, you got the hot dogs on there, and uh, over in here, of course, we got our chicken. By golly, I think you know everybody loves a burger, don't they? Huh? Hmm? Either plain or, hey, let's go first class here. Throw a hunk of cheese on there. There you go. We got our condiments in this area here, and I'll tell you something. <laughs> you got to remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Look at that. There's an American standard. <laughs> take a minute and talk to some of you older fellas out there. Maybe another driver called you a moron, or you had a bit of a run-in with a bad sales clerk, or maybe an annoying co-worker, or even a rotten relative. And you start asking yourself the question, am I totally surrounded by stupid people? <laughs> the answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you are one of the last smart people in the whole world. Yeah. yeah, kids today don't know near as much as you did when you were their age. Every generation of relatives is denser than the last. <laughs> Heck, they're not even making dogs as smart as they used to. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, sir, are the last outpost of intelligence. So you, you let them call you an idiot, and you let them laugh at you, eh? Who's the guy that got 17 years out of that car? Huh? <laughs> Who's the guy with the greenest lawn on the street? Hey. And aren't you the one that got all your Christmas shopping done in July? <laughs> At a yard sale? <laughs> so who's the idiot now, hey? Who's the moron now? And if you're as smart as you think you are, you won't answer those questions. <laughs> Remember, us morons are pulling for you. We're all in this together.
Boy Man Red Green. Just goofing around. You can laugh all you want, Harold. I'm telling you, this this adopted highway thing. What a gold mine! I got three bucks of bottles here. I got five hubcaps. And some kids on the school bus tried to wing an apple at Harold. And I cut it. <laughs> <laughs> still got the soft hands. I still got the hard hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'll grant that. And, uh, you know, it's supposed to be that operation out there is a cleanup operation, yeah. not a scavenger hunt. Well, Harold, it can be a bit of both. At least it can now. You know, when we first got up there, the darn place was so clean, there was nothing for us to do. Huh, yeah, so what do they do? Yeah. What do they do? Yeah. They take all the garbage out of the vehicles and yeah. dump it all over the side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what a location. Holy mackerel. There's a lot of advantages when you own your own highway. Uh, well, uh, you do not own the highway. <laughs> well, I drive like I do. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the opportunity here, Harley. Holy smokes. People slow down for Orphan's Bend anyhow. Why not have them stop and shop, eh? We could have a souvenir shop, a hot dog stand, tire retread in there, have the black velvet paintings. Like, and this is not just a road, this is a four-lane mall. <laughs> You're supposed to be cleaning up the side of the road, not developing it. You gotta think big, Harold. Well, you guys aren't equipped to think big. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? Who would, who would say that? Well, get yourselves comfortable because we got a real ambitious adventure with Bill today. He's gonna try and move that stump there. That stump's been around behind the lodge since, uh, well, since old man Cedric was around 70. So it's been a while. And uh, these are a bunch of tools. Actually, these are just, just a few odds and ends that I carry in my van. It's another young, that's a few youngsters. Have some tools in the back of your van at all times. It really helps the traction in the winter. I realized I had that many there. I almost said this. Done some serious chopping. <laughs> There's a chain. There we go. All right. Uh, just start chopping away under there. My gosh. She's, uh, you know, she's a little spongy. Get her out of there, Bill. Get her out of there. Get her out of there. Get her. Come on. Take it out. All right. Switch to the pickaxe. Get that out of there. Boy. Okay. Let me help you there, Bill. All right. One and two and pull. And oh. Oh. All right. Yeah. Had a few, uh, few tools lodged into the stump at this point. And Bill was trying to drill a hole for the dynamite, but uh, here's what happened. Now, don't, Dennis, Bill, don't. Uh, you, you just, you've de Bill, you've done, you, you, you've done, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, now everything's fine. Well, by golly, look at that. We got rid of all the tools. <laughs> I don't know where they are. Oh, here they come now. Very dangerous to work with Bill on a on a close uh, basis there. Oh, the chainsaw wasn't running, so it wasn't really that bad. All right, what now, Bill? Okay, now we hook up a rope, and this is the beauty of having a unit like the possum fan. You got the big eight in there, and uh, she can. I wouldn't stand on that rope, Bill. Don't stand on the rope. You might want to get off that. Get off it. There. You're off it now. Oh, my gosh. You know, I wouldn't recommend that on a full stomach. You all right there, Bill? Oh, just popped his arm out of his sleeve and probably out of his shoulder. Oh, no, he's fine. But here's another thing for you youngsters. You don't quit, you try another way. Termites, termites. So Bill's got a can of termites there. and Sprinkle a few around and we're gonna need a few more than that, Bill. Pretty big stump. Take a lot of termites, I would. Take a lot of termites, I think, Bill, to take a few of them. There, now you're talking, now you're talking. <laughs> There we go. Spare the termites, spoil the stump. That's what we say. It's gonna take a while, Bill, I think. It'll take a while. Don't be impatient now. Well, it's been uh, 10, 20 minutes. I'll give her a try. Doesn't look too bad. All right, and now we're gonna try another approach. Uh, got the chain around the tree. And this is a, a special a special deal we're gonna do. We're gonna put a rope around something real solid. What could be more solid than one of the big stone houses down the end of the laneway? These people uh, go to Florida every winter. <laughs> they got a big surprise when they come home, I'll bet. Anyway, uh, we hooked that up to the uh, chain on the stump, and we're just gonna, that, that little tool that Bill has there, I mean, the one that's in his hand, that's called a come along, and we're gonna use that to kind of winch ourselves and winch that, now it's starting to pull up snug, and what's gonna happen now is that it'll, it'll pull that stump right out of the ground, but. Now, here's another thing for you youngsters. You need a little more what they call leverage. Leverage, that's something that you need when you go to the bank. And uh, you put that on there, and now we can really pull. Uh, oh, 
Oh. Well, um. All right. Uh, this is uh, probably not. This is okay. All right. Now, okay. Fine. All right. Yeah. I don't know. You know. You know. Yeah. You know. I don't think that's gonna work though. <laughs> I know what we should do. <clears throat> Let's leave. You try to help your community, maybe stimulate the local economy, show a little imagination. Where does it get you? Trouble at Orphan's Bend. <laughs> you know, we got such a great thing going up there, and then somebody goes and complains. Really? <laughs> well, you know, I, I heard you guys had so much stuff at the side of the highway, it's down to one lane, huh? <laughs> Harold, we got a tourist attraction going there. You know, one time the mayor said to me, how come every tourist that stops in Possum Lake has car trouble? That's because if they didn't have car trouble, they wouldn't stop here, you know? <laughs> so we finally have a bona fide reason to stop and everybody's giving us grief. Well, you know, maybe, maybe it's the right idea. It's just the wrong location. You know, the side of the highway might not be the best place for a theme park. <laughs> oh, Harold, it makes so much sense there. We got refreshments, we got washrooms, we got this drive through midway, we got a big cardboard cutout elephant with a garbage pail hanging from his tail. <laughs> Cars drive up, you pay a buck, you throw your garbage, you hit Jumbo in the can, you win a dustbuster. <laughs> I'm telling you, Harold, like, Orphan's Bend is dangerous, now they slow down. We've actually made it safe. Okay, all right, you know what? These are the kinds of things you should be saying to the town council. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going down there in a few minutes, but I'm not gonna let them shut us down, Harold. I want you to meet me in the possum van up at Orphan's Bend in a couple of hours. We'll make a roadblock if we have to. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, would you like me to drop you off downtown on my way? Not necessary, Harold. Okay. <laughs> This here is a repair shop part of the show. We call, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. <laughs> Edgar Montrose here has brought in something for us to fix. What do you got for us, Edgar? Oh, no thanks, Red. <laughs> My mom wanted her dining room set refinished. So I, I started it, but I was kind of hoping you'd help me finish. Well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, you got her burned up the side there. What you're doing, using a heat gun on the varnish there? No, that was from the explosion. You want to tell us about that, Edgar? No, Red, it's not my proudest moment. All right, we'll skip it. Well, here you can use duct tape. You stick it on the varnish, and you peel it off slow, and she'll just lift right off there. Oh, no, no, I don't want to refinish that chair. I just brought it in as a reference. Oh. See, I want to repair the other three chairs so they match this one, so they're a complete set again. Oh, oh the, the rest of the dining room set that was maybe hurt by that explosion you don't want to talk about. All right, yeah, all right, all right. Well, you go, you go get the other chairs. Oh, okay. All right, all right. but here again, even with, uh, even with repair work, you can use the duct tape on that because uh, the spindles, sometimes they get loose. You put that in there, or you can, you can do the caning work, or even if you've got, a, you've got tears in the material, So, uh, are, are these the other three chairs? And the dining room table. Just let me say in my defense that chemical paint stripper and nitroglycerin are both clear liquids. too old to learn things. Are you ever too old to listen? You never listen, so I guess the answer is yes to that one. I listen, Harold. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, did you did you hear my advice? Huh? Did you, did, you, did you hear the warning of the policeman? Did you hear the horn of the oncoming truck? Oh, okay, okay, now, now this, is, this is a good point, all right? For those of you who never paid attention in physics class, 
a moving object can have a great deal of momentum. <laughs> you know, for example, a logging truck doing 100 clicks. Yes, yes, that would indeed have more momentum than, say, oh, a parked possum van. <laughs> Now, in, in fairness, it was only parked until the impact. <laughs> now, now, is, is that when the logs broke loose, Harold? I don't know. It's hard to say. All I know is I haven't had that much bark between my legs since Moose Thompson's Rottweiler went into heat. <laughs> well, the concession booths were all wrecked, but uh, the truck was fine because the hot dog buns took most of the hit. <laughs> Boy, is that highway ever a mess, though. Worse than before you guys had even adopted it. You got a lot of cleanup there, Uncle Red. No, no, I took care of it, Harold. I spoke to the Junior Rangers, and I gave them your home number. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down in a minute. Rest up. Hey, watch yourself now. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And I've kind of fed up now with Orphan's Band. I'd like to try my hand at Wife's Curve. <laughs> for the rest of you, thanks for watching. Half of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the lodge. Keep your stick on here. tonight, um, well, TGIF. Uh, the CJTOPYS is meeting ASAP uh, at the CAW Hall, room B. Uh, guest speaker is PG Young, B-A-M-A-P-H-D, uh, for IBM in USA. His topic, uh, the ABCs of MS-DOS. Um, <laughs> some SRO tickets are still available, COD. A Q&A with PG is TBA. 